Welcome to The Upper Room on Gilgal TV Network. Hello, this is Gilgal TV Network, and we welcome you to The Upper Room. The Upper Room promotes the sound teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ through the breakdown and analysis of Christian books based on biblical principles. These biblical principles form the bedrock of many books written by our dear man of God, God, Pastor Jerry Udo, the revelational teacher, He's our preacher, our leader, and the foundation of Gilgal Christian Center. This is the platform to dissect, study, critically analyze how these books have practical application to and in our daily living. The Upper Room is a program that promotes an in-depth breakdown of Christian books. Learn how these principles affect and can practically enhance your life. Join our set of panelists every Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, for the weekly episode on our Gilgal TV network. It is time for inspirational, motivational, and refresh yourself in the spirit as we prepare for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come join us in the upper room. Good evening, viewers, and welcome to another episode of the upper room, a Gilgal Christian Channel TV. I'm your host, Chinazo Moms, and with me today to discuss a very, very important topic is Brother Edwin, Brother Tito, and Sister Janet. So let's just dive right in. Today's topic is a topic that I'm sure a lot of us has heard about, and it is prayer. Prayer, I know that we all have different meanings as to what prayer is. But one common thing we can agree is that prayer is a communication to either God or, you know, when you talk about different types, then we break it down to intercession and all. But today, we're going to discuss as to what is prayer to us. And so I'd like to throw that out, you know, with my um, panelists and, you know, ask them questions and, ask, and let us dive into the discussion as to what prayer is. So what is prayer? Okay, uh, thank you very much for everyone's sex. To start with, prayer, you know, if people have different definitions of what prayer is, but I would say prayer is a gift. You know, more than all the definitions, prayer is a gift to man. Because prayer is not something that you, you earn. It's a gift that God gives to you. That, that, that gift provides the ability to communicate to God, to, to or hear from God, to intercede with other people. And most times, we don't pray because we deserve what we get from God. If you look at Daniel chapter uh, 9, verse number 18, he said, we do not make requests of you because we are righteous. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, but because of your great mercy. You know, that, that means God does not answer our prayer because we are righteous. God answers our prayers based on mercy. So that makes prayer becomes a gift. To, to, to mankind. They give to enhance our ability to communicate to God. They, 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 give, they, they give that provides a medium or a channel of communication, a channel where we can talk to God, where God can speak to us. So it's, it's a gift that, that we have to make our life every single day. Mm. It's not a gift that we, we, we are next once in a while. It's a gift that you make use of every single day because the, 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 the more you pray, the more your ability to pray increases. So which means the more the gift increases. So I, I, I will leave you there by saying prayer is a gift. Uh, my. And, and would I say that maybe that communication, because we're using the key word as communication, okay. and we know when we go back to story about Adam and Eve, there was a one-on-one -on -one communication with God at the time. Mm -hmm. But because they were driven out of the Garden of Eden, that communication ceased with man. Mm -hmm. So, are we going to say that prayer is, is that, just like you said, is that gift to be privileged to communicate with God? God. You I'm know, we can actually look at it that way. Yeah, tr tr truly, because I feel like it's a privilege to communicate with God, okay. because this is not just a man. But, uh, like, my brother has already defined what prayer is, and I still believe, like, we have already said, that it's a communication. But I feel like in this communication, in the practical sense of it. We we are only, uh, most Christians are entitled to pray to God, but are not privileged to hear from God. 
and we are not patient enough to hear from God. We only know that we talk to God and then we don't hear no feedback and God doesn't talk back to us. Mm. So I think that prayer is more of a two-way communication. communication. Yeah. Like you talk to God and then God talks back to you. And God, okay, you ask for a favor and God respond in, in many ways. So I think that is more of what we should probably just channel ourselves into hearing also more from God instead of just talking to God and not hearing from God. Mm. Yeah, that's my... That's a very good point. My uh, personal take on what prayer is, is prayer is more of like <clears throat> kind of the lens that we use to navigate through the world and everything else that we got going on. For instance, he said that he was a gift, which is also part of it. He said it's about listening and hearing from God as well as uh, talking to God. But fundamentally, if you combine all of these things, you will see that prayer is like one of those things that is, is the guide to the Christian. Obviously, we pray, and sometimes because we pray amiss, we don't receive it. Mm -hmm. uh, when we pray, we are supposed to pray in the will of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in um, Ephesians six eighteen to pray in all occasion and in the spirit mm -hmm. of God. So in every circumstance that we find ourselves as Christians, I feel like prayer is supposed to be that navigation system for us to be able to know what God has, what's God's mind for our lives. And yes, God speaks to us in multiple different ways, but prayer has got to be like one of the first news mm -hmm. that I feel like helps. And uh, let me quickly add to what my sister just said. You know, uh, mo most times we think God answers our prayer because of our obedience. Mm -hmm. And that could be true, but there's an higher truth. You know, God does not answer our prayer with our obedience, but because of his mercy. Because of his mercy, yes. The, the, the Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. Mm. So, if you think because you are obedient, because of your strength, then when you pray, your prayer compels God to answer. You know, your prayer, your obedience does not compel God. But His mercy compels Him to, to answer. Because that mercy came through Jesus. So that is a compelling power right there. Not because of your, your obedience. Though your, your, your obedience is equally important. You have to obey the word of God. You have to align yourself to the will of God. But if you declare the mercy, and think it, it is because of what you're doing. Now you take upon yourself to start thinking that it is because of your effort. But before we jump right into, you know, like giving as to when that response will come to, the key point that we can, you know, we've agreed on is that communication is key. Now I think the viewers are going to look at, the first question is, what kind of communication? Like we have, there are different types of communication. People mm -hmm. sit down and the way we talk to people, is it just, and just like, you know, Brother Tito said, it's a two-way street whereby when you sit down with a physical human being and you're talking to someone, it's I say something and I'm expecting, expectation is that there's going to be a response. Yeah. So some people feel that it could be in a quiet moment. Some people feel that it could be, you know, how do I speak? The question is, in terms of communication, people have different ways they actually yeah, communicate. Sure. Some people get on their knees and they look at it as more as a supreme being, mm -hmm. while another looks at it like, if I'm going to pray to God and, and God says he's this to me, mm -hmm. then it's going to be casual, mm -hmm. me, that, that. So the question now begs, uh, how do we pray? How do we pray? Because we're, we, we said prayer, we are putting it now, is communication. Mm -hmm. So how do we communicate? Can I, if, if I would like to go first, I feel like the, the communication is uh, it's based on what grounds and what relationship or status of, mm. of faith you are mm. in. I feel like there are certain times that you, you take a posterior um, way of praying, maybe you kneel down. Mm. There are ways you could stand to pray. Mm -hmm. There are other means that you could also walk or, when, or you just communicate or you meditate or do me kind of like a meditation. Mm. That, because because it all depends on what mood and what atmosphere or what other exactly. kind of situation. Yeah. Because sometimes I personally, mm -hmm. sometimes I do meditation, and I, I, I realize that the more I meditate, the more I hear from God. Mm -hmm. Like I hear Him talk back to me. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm when I'm meditating on His words, He explains everything to me, like exactly. more of what I did not even know, mm -hmm. even the way I've not seen it before. Mm -hmm. And I see that this is God communicating back to me, and this is my prayer, and. And this me like communicating with God. So and another way is that people feel like there are times in your life that you might not feel comfortable to just go down and kneel. But you just 
walk and talk to God like a friend. I feel like that that is one of the most that is that is what I did not know earlier, but it is what has really really helped my relationship with God. That I realize that God is is my father and it's also my friend. That when I am in distress, even though I am not I am in the public place, that I don't have to like go down on my knees in the public or in the train station, but I can sit down and tell him, I know you are here, I know you are hearing me, I know this is this. I know this is that, but I know you're working this thing out. But what can I do about it? You know, I can communicate with you. This is my problem. These are my challenges. So I feel like it's not about the posture; it's about the setting and where you find yourself. Okay. So, uh, if, if I'm out to what, what my boy I just said, you know, um, communication is, is important. And in communication, someone has to speak and someone has to listen in order to give give a, a feedback. Which channel of communication now? Most times, like, when we are praying to God, we say, okay, we are praying in silence, you know, because we, we think that God, or we know that God sees what's in our heart. God knows what our intention. Of course, God knows what you want to ask, or even before you ask, he knows. But if you don't ask, he won't give. He even said it. He said, ask, and he yeah. shall. So he, he gave said, me a command. Yeah. He said, whatever you shall ask in my name, it, it didn't say whatever shall silently ask in my name. Whatever. So anytime prayer has been addressed in the Bible, it has to do with speaking. Now, how you speak doesn't really matter. Because one, God understands your, your medium of communication or your mode of communication. But you just have to speak. Where you speak doesn't matter. Because you are like you are like an altar of God. So anywhere you are going, that altar is inside of you. So there's no designated place that you say, okay, this is the only place that I can pray. I can speak to God. You can be walking on the street. And and, and you 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 you're praying, you're speaking in tongues. Someone that don't know you or might might think that you are going north. But yes, you are going north in the right way. But in wisdom, also, well, let me pull one, um, an example of what you're saying. In, in wisdom, and also saying, in wisdom, so let's say, for instance, someone comes for an interview, a job interview, mm -hmm. and at that point, you really want to communicate with God in the presence mm -hmm. of the, your interviewers. Mm -hmm. You can't start speaking in tongues right in front of them. Like, what's going on? So I, you know, like, there is, just like you said, there is a setting. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a quiet time. And like you said, mm -hmm. speaking, there are times that even when, you know, like, when you're facing a situation, the Bible tells us that with mourning and groaning, as in you can't say, the words can't just come out. And like, God knows your heart. But you see people that when they're going through a pain that, you know, that they're, they're expressive. there's a pain that, let them give you an example. And I always say this, that the, the world hasn't found a word to describe a parent that has lost a child. You can hear widows often and things mm. like that, but let's use a, a mother that has lost a child. There are times that you don't know the words, but she knows that she has to come to God because mm. he's the only one that can give her that peace mm. that she needs at that time. Even the communication in her heart, mm. God knows, because she can't say it. Mm. She's just there and she's, um, and that's why sometimes when I meet people like this and they can't even speak. It's not because they don't know what to say, but at that, at that time, words has, you know, yeah. words fail them. Mm. It's like they're just dumb. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's true. But let, let me put this analogy now. For example, uh, you're standing in front of your father mm. and you want to ask him for something. How do you ask him? Do you do you just keep silent and and, and stay as you know, and stay at him and be like? No, but the setting. You, 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 you see my now when you speak to your father, regardless of every setting. Sometimes you use eye contact. You just to your dad. I, I mean <laughs> when you're asking for something. Okay. Because some like your your father might understand the eye contact, the body movement, but he might not know what you want. It, it, you know that, okay, when, 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 once you come now, you know, you might change your countenance. He knows that, okay, you want something. Mm -hmm. But for him to know what you want exactly, there, there, there must be an asking. 
So which means that you have to ask at that moment. But if you keep saying and say your father and be like, you can see my heart, you know what I want. Because God has given you everything. Now, why do we have to ask? The Bible says, the Bible, or the Bible says he has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Now, having this mentality that God has given you everything, now, why are you asking? That's the one question. Now, you are asking God. God has given you everything. Now, why are you asking again? So, God knows that he has given you everything. Now, what you are asking, he knows what you are asking. What you are asking is inside that thing that he has already given you, which pertains to life and godliness. So, 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 which means that you still have to ask specifically, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. Be specific. But when you are not specific enough, and you say because God understands and sees my heart, He has given you everything. But you should so work. God, He has given you everything. Now you are talking about the interview setting now. Before you enter the in interview, there should be a communication. Because that free communication with God prepares what whatever you go on inside that interview so you don't have to wait to get in there and start speaking in the tongue of the spirit ma, 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 ma. or like you're, you're, you're keeping quiet meditating. no it is too late for that while you're driving going there she just spoke in it you are lambasting in tongue why dressing up at your your, your, your hours you are lambasting in tongue you're praying you're preparing the atmosphere to suit what you want when you get there but if you are waiting to when you get to the interview before you start praying, you won't, you won't get the time to pray because even at that point, one, you'll be confused. You will, you, you will panic. You won't even know what to pray about. So to build your confidence, what, what do you do? There must be a pre-planning before you get to the interview. But to add to what you're saying in regards to, you know, God um, has given you everything pertaining to life and godliness, but you still have to work out your salvation because yeah. imagine if... God says, yes, he has, in fact, he said it. He said, I've given you everything, and then you just know everything is there, and then you just relax. Mm -hmm. You find out that in your laxity, you don't, as in, you become cold. Yeah. But if you keep on working yourself, working yourself, working yourself, mm -hmm. you, you know that there's a problem that comes with laxity, and that's why he's saying acts. The question now becomes, do you even know what to what ask for? Because I've given you everything. everything. Now, the reason why I'm telling you to ask me is because so that you can take your time to find out the thing. There are a lot of things that we ask God for that is very, very necessary. And sometimes when we go to God in prayer, we find that that is very, very necessary because He now teaches you patience. Mm. You don't need it. Mm. Pray for somebody else mm. to get it. Mm. So these are the things that God tries to teach you mm. in, the, in the asking part of it. So the asking really is not for you. It's mm. like, do you have patience to, mm. get to, to get this thing that I want mm. to give you? This thing you're asking me, my dear, it's not even necessary for you. So, look at another angle. So now, that's let, what it is. Let, let, let me really put a, 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 a point in there. When a blind man met Jesus, Jesus knew he, he was blind, right? But what did Jesus ask him? What, as in he asked him what he what want? Yes. Because, because so that he can speak and tell Jesus what he wants. Jesus knows that he's blind. Jesus can see you are blind. So Jesus knew that what he wanted at that time was for his sight to be restored. But he said, ask him, what do you want? I want to hear from you. I don't want to assume what is in your heart. I know what is in there, but you, what you want. And also for the Son of Man to be glorified. To be glorified. Right. So what I, I, I wanted to say, I feel like the posture of your prayer, whatever you're going, exact, however you're going to go about the prayer, mm. it really depends on what exactly you're, you're, what kind of prayer you're doing. Like if you're doing a prayer of thanksgiving or contrition or whatever you were doing, it depends on how you're going to go about it. And also fasting and prayer. So with those kinds of things, like you're going to either take that, you know, um, reverencing kind of like posture or you're going to just speak casually in a sense. But either way, you have to speak to God. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, and also another thing that we need to remember is that the Holy Spirit prays for us mm -hmm. as well. Yes. So there are certain things that if you're not also praying, the, the Holy Spirit is also praying on your behalf. So I think that's where the help also comes in, in mm -hmm. the sense when you cannot place it into words, like she yes. was saying, uh, when you are in a certain place and <clears throat> you cannot speak or you cannot go into tongue mm -hmm. speaking and all that good stuff. So I feel like you need to also remember that. Yeah, um, definitely. But, you know, one thing came into my mind, like, 
what if someone was deaf and dumb and I happen to be a healer? Would I go and ask the person, what do you want? You, uh, if, if, if God has given me the grace to read minds mm -hmm. and I know this is what this person wants, I guess, honestly, would I, will I, okay, what if is is way worse situation? He's crippled. In your and and he he has no other means of communicating to you that like to show that he is deaf and dumb. That's where the and Holy you are grace, you as the yeah. man of God and you are grace to to, to heal the person. Mm -hmm. So if God has put it, has told you what this person wants, I feel like I cannot just go ahead and ask the person, "Do you want me uh, to heal you?" Uh, do you, or I might ask him, "Do you want me to heal you?" Or mm -hmm. I, but I can ask him, "What do you want?" Knowing that he has challenges in communicating, and sometimes. Let us not mistake the fact that a lame person's first need might not be to walk. Mm. There are people that have different things that different. are more, more important, important to them. Yeah, when we physically see someone that is dumb, yeah. their first thing might not be, heal me, mm. I want to talk. Mm. There might be something more, what about my child is sick, I want you to heal that person even before I can walk. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes we look at human... Um, Limitations, limitations yeah. as what is their pressing need, but that might not even be their pressing need, you know. And that's where we bring the next. There's a what is as in the importance of that communication. What do we think is the importance of it? Because we've talked about you know what prayer is and how to pray. The mm -hmm. what's the importance? Because some people might look at it like I don't even think it's important in the world we live today. It's not even important to pray because you know, like you said, God already sees us. So what's the point? But we all know that there is an importance. The Bible tells us that the powerful, you know, the prayer of a that song that it, that a powerful prayer of a man, it, avail I, avail it makes tremendous power available. available. So the way I always look at this is like a car without battery. Mm. If you start it, it doesn't. It's like it's cold. But once you go into a car, and you start it, and you keep on revving it and revving it, the power that just keeps on going into it. And just like Brother Tito said. There are different kinds of people. The more that more communication, you keep on communicating with God, you find out that you're a better Christian than you were when you started. And I'll use myself as an example. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you that the Christian that I am today was the Christian that I started as when I first started and made up my mind that I really wanted to get involved and know who God was for me. My friends, my family, my fans out there, how are you all doing? I am Desmond Walter Oreki. Uh, first, I want to introduce these books that a friend of mine, Edwin, introduced to me. I want you to go have a taste of it. Are you tired of unanswered and ineffective prayers? Are you really tired of, of unanswered and ineffective prayers? Need to learn targeted and effective prayers? Just go get these books. Just okay. go get it. The first one is God of Judgment, and the other one is Second Chance, written by Pastor Dr. Jerry Udo. Just go get this book, okay, and see it to, to turn around. There is power mighty in the Word of God. All right, bye.